Tiny Tarot. Hey, hey, what have you got to say today? This is Low Key Magical, also Christina Smart, and I am here with the podcast master, Earl. Hey, Hello. Earl, how are you? I'm fine. And we are getting ready to do a Tiny Tarot podcast once again. Things have been going really well, Earl. I love doing this podcast. This has been great. And Tiny Tarot has always come through, has it not? Always. Sassy, as usual. Yes. Uh, you ask a surface level question and you get the root of the problem often with Tiny Tarot. But today, let's see, it's close to the end of 2022. And yes. we would like to ask Tiny Tarot today, what is 2023 going to look like? And I know that's 12 months out and Tiny Tarot is usually very succinct and to the point. So we are breaking it up in months. We're going to do quarters. So. January, February, March, that's where we're going to start. April, May, June, you know the way the months go. If you don't, then you should Google that. <laughs> you should know the months. And uh, we're going to ask Tiny Tarot to just give us what we need to look for. Like, what are, gonna, what are the highlights going to be? And the first, I'm telling you right now, I've already been getting intuitive messages about this all day. The first part was, uh, the first message that I got was, when you are looking back on 2022, be diligent to highlight what you enjoyed. Be diligent to highlight what brought you joy. Don't focus on what you haven't liked about the last several years. Or within your own experience, you will just be paving paths to create more of that for yourself. And since we know that our influence is really at arm's length, how do I want this circle around me to appear? How, what choices do I want to come to me in the next year? And the way that we, if you're wanting improvement, if immediately you go, well, I don't want to be fat and I don't want to be depressed and I don't want to be poor, like those are the things that everyone focuses on every year. Then you look back at this last year at moments of incredible health for you, moments when you really felt your best. Look back at moments when you felt abundant. If you have ties to money that are painful for you, think of abundance in other ways. Think of the abundance of spices in your spice cabinet. We talk about we that again. a lot. To your ancestors, that would be wealth. You've got to understand that. Think of the abundance of the leaves on the trees if you were outside this year. Think of the abundance of love that comes to you even from places that you don't know. And... What else did we talk about? Depression. Oh, poor people. Some people are just so wrapped up in just daily not feeling good. You can find a few good events that happened to you this last year. If you got a payday and that check was bigger than you thought, if you got a phone call from a friend that really made you feel good, if you had a loving moment stroking a puppy, having fun with a cat, it's those kind of things that we want to focus on. Well, hey, low-key magical, those seem a little bit superficial. Really? If they brought you joy, then in no way were those experiences superficial, let's be honest. And what we are doing in our, what we're calling the aggregate consciousness that gets to, if you're viewing this podcast or if you're, if you're getting this message in any way, this aggregate consciousness is a group that is learning to work with our thought process. We are not going to be sloppy thinkers, as Abraham Hicks says. We're, we are a group that is understanding how we create this construct that we're sharing. And a big part of it, no, right now I'm not at the place where I can think of a steak and a steak appears in front of me, but I do know that it is my thought process and my emotions that lead me to my next set of choices. And when those choices feel like an improvement, we are always on a good path, always. So, <laughs> Earl, I would like for you to think about something really positive that happened for you, something that made you really feel joyful this last year. All right, and select the deck. And select one, two, or three. Yes. And what was your joyful thing? Do you mind me asking? I've made it to this place. <laughs> You're still alive. Yes. That's I've, a wonderful I've, I've thing. I've made it to where I'm at. And where I'm at is really nice. And I like it. And, really, um, really nice. Yeah. I just... I just. That's, that's a positive thing. I have, a, I have some positive I, things that happened at well. I'm we, overwhelmingly grateful. We have some uh, children and relatives that have really accomplished a lot this year 
We have uh, personal goals that we've met. I just, I think there's so much going on. I, I personally am in better health than I have been our for kids, most of my life. And I'm very so positive unique. about that. Yes. They're so and, unique uh, and wild. Check this out. This was actually from a conversation, an actual conversation just the other night where we were watching a, a, a Hindi, um, an Indian um, superhero a, yes, TV okay. show. And in it, Shiva is a boy. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I can't deal with Shiva as a boy. I'm, 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 I'm hurting with this. And then Beck was like, well, Shiva can be a boy if Shiva wants to be a boy. <laughs> oh, yes. And, okay. And I'm like, no, Shiva's a woman. And with the arms and the, you know, the destroyer of worlds. And because if she can destroy worlds, she can darn well be a boy. You know, that's, so, a, that's a pretty good argument. This is how right unique there. our kids yeah, are. I'm so grateful unique. for all of this insanity. Absolutely. I love it. So we have, yeah. we have wonderful people around us, and I'm yes. sure if you think in your mind, you can find wonderful people around you too. We have love coming to us all the time, and I really take a moment, find where that love is and feel it. And then we have abundance around us all the time. When I'm hiking in nature, I notice how ridiculously abundant foliage and nature is. Nature in itself is just ridiculously flamboyant. Why would we even think that we are any different from that. So with that, we're gonna look at January, February, March, and pull two cards from Tiny Tarot. And we have, this is really nice. This is an Eight of Cups and a King of Pentacles. Now the Eight of Cups, let's look at that first. The cups represent our emotions and the things that we really, really care about, have an emotional investment in. And the Eight of Cups, this person is walking away from, he's got three cups that are, actually he's got all eight cups full there, but he's walking, he's got his back to them, he's walking away. And this is one of those cards that says, sometimes you make a decision that people around you may not understand. Sometimes you may decide to move on from something and to leave something behind. You know where you're going. You know what your motivation is. And you know that you're moving to something better. But those around you may say, what are you doing? What you have right here is enough. It's good enough. You should be satisfied with what you have. Why are you continuing to try and better yourself? Now, that's the way it comes across sometimes. And the way that I look at this is, let's say that, you know, you've always, especially if the people around you are like, this is really different. What, why are you, why? It's, it's like a confusion of the people around you. If you have never worked out in your life and you start a new health regime, if you have always eaten a certain way and you decide to be vegan one day, if you... Uh, have a great job, but your dream has always been X, Y, Z, and you start making those changes and the people around you say, you know, your job is just fine the way it is. Why do you want it to be better? And so the energy of this is you saying, I can see what's best for me. I'm going to choose the cups that are serving me, but I'm going to leave behind what does not, because I can see that there's something better for myself on the horizon. And then Tiny Tarot immediately gives us the King of Pentacles. So there's abundance tied to this. The people around you may not see that at the beginning of this year, you have decided to make some changes and maybe they don't agree with those changes and maybe they don't understand them, but it's leading you to Okay, let's, let's talk about this King of Pentacles for a second. He's an earth energy, right? And I'm using the camera and I feel like I'm backwards all the time here. He's an earth energy and the pentacles are the things that we care about. The pentacles are money, of course, but it's our household. It's those material things that we've accumulated over time. Those things that give us physical pleasure. This is what that is. And the king, excuse me, has absolutely figured out what that is for him, what is valuable to him, how to amass more of it, how to let it flow out and in, in that perfect rhythm that we talk about with abundance, not being afraid when the bank account dips a little because you know that it's coming right back. 
these choices or this choice that you're moving towards, even though other people may not get it. Let's say you decide to do a podcast about tarot reads and there may be some people in your life that say, okay, what? This is a complete waste of time. Why? No, I understand why I'm here and the messages that I'm trying to get across and that I'm moving towards something that maybe I can't see the end result, but I know where I'm going energetically. I'm going towards joy, I'm going towards abundance, I'm going towards health, I'm going towards all of those things. And guess what? To do that, I may have to be different than I am right this minute. So this ties in big too with what people like to think of as New Year's resolutions. But this isn't, I'm going to write down a list, but I'm going to quit doing this, I'm going to quit doing that. No, this is really getting a clear view of, okay... This year, this is what's happening. I have a very clear view of where I want to wind up. King of Pentacles. Like, this is a fantastic energy to embody. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to do things a little bit differently than I've done before. And the people around me may not understand that. But I'm not going to worry about it. Because by the <laughs> end of this season, and we're talking January, February, March. Right. I'm going to be in a much more comfortable place and people around me will see that. You know the King of Pentacles in your... And it doesn't have to be... All right, negative, I love that card. Negative King of Pentacles. You might be that blowhard that's always like, I bought my kids all Mercedes. And I, that's, when we see that and we dislike that, that's one of those things that keeps abundance away from us. We're not worried about that energy, okay? Our abundance comes to us in lots of ways. And then is reflected by what's in your bank account. That's what we get tied to. We get focused on when we think of the pinnacles energy. But this is all of those things that make you feel abundant and comfortable. All of those physical things. Including getting your own house, your own area, your own. Remember that your surroundings, your house, your room, your apartment, your bedroom reflects your psyche up here. So the King of Pentacles has got that place figured out. It's, it's clean, it's tidy, because when this around us reflects what's going on up here, we want abundance, we want luxury, we want clean, we don't want cobwebs, we don't want clutter, we don't want clutter here. And that may seem like a big project. There may be a few people going, what, I gotta throw some stuff away? Yeah, and maybe, maybe that's going to upset you a little bit, but you know that what you're moving to is better for you. And goodness sakes, King of Pentacles. All right, I will take that anytime, anytime. What do you think about that, Earl? You ready for that King of Pentacles energy? I love it. I am. I am, yes. All right, well, the next two are a Tower and an Eight of Swords. And anytime you pull up the Tower, everybody goes, oh. I don't want a tower. All right. And the reason that we get the notice of the tower is to understand that there could be some things that are on a bit of an unstable foundation. And the card lets us know this ahead of time so that we're not the people that are falling out of the top of the Good tower. Grief, that thing is nothing oh my but God, disaster. I was in the Look, shower. it's on fire up it's above. It's on fire up above. What are they falling like into? And what are they? Fa they're falling into the pit of despair, basically. What are those now, things sticking no. up though? Are they going to get right, poked now. in the face? <laughs> all right. I don't like this card. <clears throat> I realize that you don't like this card, Earl. But let's this card really, should come with a stick really of bubble gum. About, let's really think about what this card says, okay? It's actually representative of a natural process that takes place. Anytime you have built a structure or a belief system on an unstable foundation. When you begin on instability, it's like playing Jenga on a, right? On one of those right. park benches that's all like, right? That, that game isn't going to get you very far. And at some point, it's going to topple over. So the tower says, let's bring this to your attention now. That especially when you get to a part of your life where things have improved greatly for you. And I want you to understand this. This is not, and then the inevitable energy is going to be right back down. No, no, no. The inevitable energy is when you are really resonating to who you truly are, you're beginning to live your truth, you're going to live your joy. Those things around you that do not resonate to that will fall away. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So when I am in joy and am I, I am in self-love and I am in, okay, the hateful people that have been in my life will no longer be in my life. And there are some of us that get a little uptight about those changes that may come when we really are, you know, I don't like the term living our truth, but you know what I mean? Relationships can change. There are some people that may not agree with the way that you live your life. There may be some things that you had built. There's always. It's almost like yes. a, it's almost like a rule of of being a human being. There's always. It is a pushback. shedding of the skin. I it think I'm going to get a Nissan Sentra. Don't get a skin. Nissan Sentra. Don't what the Nissan hell Sentra. is wrong with you? What Are you drunk? I'm going to get married. Don't get married. Don't get married. La, la, la. Marriage I'm is get terrible. Divorced. Don't get divorced. La, You've got to stay together for the kids. What's wrong right. with you? There's what? always there's, there's always, always pushback. Any time that you're making a, a a true change, I mean, we're not talking yeah. about. You know, I'm just going to floss my teeth more often. Like that's yeah. we're talking about people that. Honestly, if you're in a place that isn't comfortable, if you really have made some changes up to this point for your betterment that maybe didn't make everybody happy, and you really are in a comfortable place, for some people, that makes them a little bit, right? What are you doing? This is really, how, how am I not in your life so much anymore? Why haven't you been calling? Why don't you like my posts on Facebook talking about how shitty my life is? You should always... When I say I'm having a day where I feel ugly, you're supposed to be like, but you're so beautiful. Like, that's why aren't you doing that for me? And that's where this tower comes in. And we've had people, I mean, if you think back in your life that have fallen away, fallen away when, and maybe there was some regret there too. I just don't see these people anymore. I, first of all, falling away. hey, guess what? The phone is just as heavy on one side as it is on the other. Right. You know, they can reach out to you. It's not your responsibility to reach out. I mean, let's just say that obligation being what it is. Don't worry about that. But if you've had people that as you have changed and bettered yourself, instead of supporting and being there for you, they suddenly became distant. There is a right. reason for that. There's a vibrational reason for that. You, you need that. You need that pushback. You need that. To, and to, you take the energy from that and you bring it into your, your like ramjet. Yes. You, you pull that in like straight hydrogen in outer space. You pull that in. And you, you just, and you absolutely and use you, that. You pull you the energy. You slingshot around. You pull the energy out of it and into your own you know, cosmic data stream portals that you surf around in during your day-to-day -day business and you 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 use that energy and flip it back out. Yes. And, and use it for whatever purpose you want. And, okay, what does this lead to next? This, this Eight of Swords energy. And the Eight of Swords, again, the swords are our thoughts and our words. And if you look, this woman is surrounded by swords and she's got herself loosely bound and blindfolded. So there's something that she's refusing to see. Right now all of her uh all of her all of this is internal. This is all internal. And she's bound herself with her own thoughts. So this is where we make assumptions. We decide that that friend that isn't calling us anymore, it must have been because of X, Y, Z. It must be because they hate me. It must be because of this thing that I said. Or this is internal negative dialogue that comes with, oh gosh, replaying every, let's say that you had a falling out with a sibling and when you start getting depressed, you replay those negative things that were said to you over and over again. You replay when you're trying to fall asleep at night, every awful thing that you did from the third grade on. And this is where this tower comes with, first of all, never make the assumption of what someone else thinks of you. You're not that psychic. Everybody wants to assume that they know, man, I know what he thinks of me. I know it from the look on his face. I know it because every time you have no idea. And they don't you, like me very much. Yeah, they don't think they like me very much. And the reality is you're not on people's minds as much as you think you are. You might be replaying a I know, I'm sorry. I want you to, uh, really? Am I really? I should be on people's minds 24-7. But think about how ridiculous that is. Do you really think that that person is sitting at home, like staying up late at night, mulling over something that you did in the third grade? Like, like no, no, that's absolutely no. not. And so bump into them and they don't know who yes, you are. Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, these are both really 
transformational cards in this moment because the tower to me also represents absolutely the letting go of this process, okay? You, when the tower comes, when you have really become something that's radically different from what you were before and you wanted that, man, this year started and I understood what it really was that I wanted to go for and I did that and I've achieved some things and I thought that there would be more people that would celebrate that with me and what I'm seeing is that my crowd just got a little smaller and now I'm a little bit worried about that. What am I leaving behind? What am I moving towards? What have I just stirred up? But this whole process is something of a, like I said, a skin shedding, chrysalis busting open, but my wings aren't quite dry yet moment. How do you think that caterpillar to butterfly feels the moment that that first of all I turned to goo and I thought I was dying for a little bit but now I believe I've become something but I've got to I've kind of got to figure that out and the world is very very different I have wings now and I don't even know how to use them yet this looks like it it's like oh it's stirring things up but I don't believe that it's negative and we're gonna move it right ah well okay and then some things look it's the death card and the seven of wands together and the death card is in reverse. Guess what this is? This is new stuff for you. This is new work. This is Brand sometimes new stuff. sometimes a feeling of having to defend that, but that doesn't matter because that is absolutely something new for you. So we have, oh gosh, we have the beginning that starts out really nice. And then I'm not saying that it goes negative. But as a result of that niceness, some really big things could change. Goodness, here's what I'm thinking of. Like, let's say that someone, they've never applied for this particular kind of job before, but they decided to. And everybody around them said, what do you think you're doing? And guess what? The job wound up being really awesome and you're making more money than you've ever made. And then they say, hey, We'd like to move you up north and you go, whoa, hold on. This is not at all what I thought I was getting into. I have to move. That's going to disrupt so much stuff. And what's my mom going to think? And what's my brother going to think? And what's, how can I, how can I disrupt my life this way? All right. But because we did this and because you stood up for yourself in your work, you know what guys, I realize that you don't think that I should move, but this is such a fantastic opportunity for me that I'm gonna fight for my choice. This is what I want to do in the world. Let's, again, let's say you're, and all of a sudden you have to move to Colorado or whatever. This is what I wanted. Let me do this because new, new things are coming as a result of this. Absolutely new, like, ideas being born this is the this is the opposite of the withering away it is the coming up and being new so all of this this again when you look at this as soon as the tower comes up you want to go oh man but at the same time sometimes that oh man is exactly the energy you need to propel you into something new and we're all right so now we're moving to january february march april may june July, August, September, October, November, December. Holy crap. Holy crap. All right. I, I pulled three cards because Tiny Tarot said, get, I'm, I'm sorry about that reaction, guys. But the first one is the Nine of Pentacles. And if you know about the Nine of Pentacles, it's one of those nine is the combos of three. So it builds on itself. And this is plentifulness and bountifulness and all of the abundance that we had talked about before. This is the result of the hard work and dedication. And it's almost, I feel like this is like that blackberry bush that you forgot that you planted. And then the next year you walk out and you are just pounds and pounds of blackberries. Like you just, you almost forgot that that much growth could take place in that short of a period of time. And she's got a bird of paradise on her shoulder. Like the, the things of nature love to be around those that have got their shit together. Like that's really what this is. It's, it's comfort and it's money and it's abundance. And then it's followed immediately by the Empress. Wow. And this is fertility in all things. It's creativity. It's 
the two of these things being together is like lush, luxurious, fruitfulness, and people around you seeing that. And I feel like it's the result of everything that happens throughout the year. And then we end with the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is not just success in your work, but it's other people celebrating the success of what you've done. What you've done. Like this is a slam bang to the end of this. And I want to, gosh, I want to put incredible. all this together. This is pretty incredible. Like I feel like this middle part of the year is where the rubber meets the road for some people. But the outcome is fantastic. And and really, you're kind of starting off with a King of Pentacles energy anyway, and it the the and now the the way that I'm seeing this here is that there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity near the beginning of the year, and you can put whatever life event. This is the basic skeleton. There's an idea. There's an opportunity at the beginning of the year that is incredibly fruitful and allows you to truly come into who you are. And because of that, woo-hoo, some things have got to change around you. There's movement. There's falling away of some people. I have to throw some people I out of window. I got to throw, right. And uh, you know what? Let's talk about, even if this no, is no, a... No, 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 no. No, you're not, you're not throwing throw anybody, anybody out of window. window let's but... even say, let's say that there's a, you know, you're moving to a new house or you're making a big financial decision or any of that, that... That for you, it is the right thing to do. For the people around you, it may not seem like that. And what we have done in the past is got bogged down in this Eight of Swords energy. This is a big part of where's my little Ganesha that needs to remove this obstacle for us. This has been a huge obstacle. And I feel like that's the reason that we, that intuitively I said, this is the year that we clean up our thoughts. This is the year when we stop being sloppy thinkers. One of the main agreements in the book, The Four Agreements, is to stop making assumptions. You cannot know what the people around you are thinking, nor can you control what they're thinking. And if you base every life decision on, how's mom going to feel about this? How's sister going to feel about this? How's the boss going to feel about this? You know, I made a... I made a commitment. I should probably keep the commitment. Yeah, you work at 7-Eleven. I don't think that... <laughs> okay, maybe you don't work at 7-Eleven. But there are some things that we get so tied into because we are afraid of what people will think or say to us or behind our back when you're not even there that we bind ourselves from making these big changes because we fear this. We fear it. Isn't the big change what you want? Yes, it is what you want. But you don't have to, this doesn't have to be that disruptive. When you know this energy is coming, and that's why we do these reads, when you know this energy is coming, you can prep for that. And you can say, you know what, let's be honest. If things change for me really big and, you know, my vibration was high, I can kind of figure out who's going to fall away in my life, right? I mean, we kind yeah. of know that. We, we know the people that have always been there for us and those that have not we know that those kind of things are going to happen and we can get caught up in just being super defensive or we can say, you know what? I'm standing up for myself. There's two, there's multiple energies to this card. There is that, oh, I got family. That's always, why are you doing it this way? Why aren't you going to school? Why are you going to school? Like you're going to get that. The world is going to push back to you. And most of the time, you get the majority of your pushback when you're not confident in what you're doing. The, the outside world wants to see you making choices in a way, right? The king, the king doesn't get questioned no. where he wants to go no, and what you? he wants to do. He's got his own cash. He's got his own way of getting there. Yes. He's going to be the one that makes the decisions. And should something fall away for him... It just gets rebuilt. Better, stronger, better, stronger, all that stuff. And, all right, new things begin to grow. Stuff that you couldn't have even thought of. That's, that's it. It's like the new job went to the new place and then turned into, guess what, something even cooler. A new person in your life, a new project pops up, a new 
a new D and D group that you never could have thought was going to be this fun. Like this is all brand because of, because you said this is what I want to do. I'm going to stand up for it. I'm not going to be afraid of my tower moment when everything changes because that's what I've been moving towards. I haven't done all this internal work for everything to stay exactly the same. Have I? No. And I realized that the map to where I'm going, healthy, joyful, abundant, is going to look very different from where I have currently been. It's going to look really different, but it's going to be really, really new. And then once you pass over that, boom, and the strength, the strength and the confidence that comes with that, of course, of course, this is where this goes. This is that... It just looks like fortune and liberty. I know. This is like that confidence of, of the people around you seeing it. Look at this guy on the horse. He's like, look what I have accomplished. And everyone around him is saying, yes, that wreath represents that success, like coming through a portal of sorts. And the people around you saying, you know what? This is so, we can see this. We can see what you've done. I may not have agreed with you, but guess what? You did it. Yay! that's such a good feeling and how can they see it because ugh, I just want to go you're just as abundant as you can possibly be and of course it's money and of course it's comfort but man this is and more it's, like it's the empress also, is that it's creative also embracing energy embracing that too it's, it is embracing it's, it's that. welcoming the gift in and embracing it here we go this yes is, I've, I've earned this I've earned this of course this is what I love this next. and that's in the moment when people say, I, I just want to be, I want to win the lottery, or I want this one huge momentous event to come in and change everything. And really, it should feel like it's the next logical step. It, I feel the moment that that abundance is hit, it isn't a surprise. It's the next step, of course. Of course this became successful. Of course I met new friends. Of course I now have the love of my life. Of course now all my bills are paid and I have zero anxiety about that. Of course I am more comfortable and healthy than I've ever been. Of course I have kids, grandkids, and now they're all resonating along with me and feeling just as great as I am. And of course, of course this is where I've gone because I dropped the bullshit mm -hmm. that I didn't ever, I never needed in the first place. Does the king put up with bullshit? <laughs> no. no. <coughs> I will not allow it. Oh my goodness, you guys. Really, I just want to focus on for the whole year, we realize that there may be some bumpiness, but it's all going to be you standing up for yourself, you being who you really are, and you coming into just unbelievable abundance. And for, this is a big fertility card. But for those of you that are wanting to get pregnant, of course, this is a great, great card. But it's creativity in all things. So you've made it to this point, like we say this, you've made it to this point and you've produced all this and guess what more and guess what more and guess what more. This is going to compound upon itself. And, you know, the fact that you're this is just a nice little cherry on top. You know, when you come out at the end and you're like, hey, guess what? I was you know what I mean? And it's not, it's not so much. He's not riding around going, hey, you guys suck because I was right. That's he's not, just riding to he's work. He's just riding. He's just happy to be there <laughs> and the people are celebrating him being there and it's all good. But there is that little part in the back of your mind that, you know, the best revenge is success. Like you do yes. kind of want it. That's my opinion. That's not Tiny Tarot necessarily saying that. But uh, well, there's the picture nice right there. Little, it is a nice little cherry on top of that. So we'll have this whole spread out for you to see on screen. And there's that moment, man, when you pull as a reader, you pull that tower and go, okay, uh. okay, guys. Whew, this looks like it's a little rough, but. Once the once you see this, and, and even when it's, let, let's be honest, even when this is out like this, it just means an ending that's leading to a new beginning. And when we, when we have it out like this, the tower was the tough part. This was the hard part, you know? Oh, you know what? Not even that. This was the hard part. The Coming moment when the you really, really, place. when you really, really made the decision. When you looked at that taller peak and said, you know what, guys? I know where I'm at is really good. But yes, Haley says it, this'll be even better. And where do you wind up? Guess what? I was right. <laughs> That's awesome. Tiny Tarot, hey, hey, brought it today.
Yes. Does not does not sugarcoat. Tiny Tarot never does sugarcoat. Whew. Well, Earl, let's just say this next year for us, regardless of how these energies play out, I am saying it's all good in the end. It's all good in and the end. And it's all about that continued process of cleaning up our thoughts and being very, I'm very, very excited about it. deliberate creators. Yeah. Start the year out strong, and then no matter how things begin to play out, you're still the king. You're the king in this whole read. From it's beginning to end, you're the king in this whole read. Don't forget that. I'm I love not this. going to. I'm not going to forget that. I whoop, love this. Whoop. Thank All you right. For that. Well, uh, I am on Facebook, Low Key Magical with a K, on Instagram. I am recently on TikTok and. These appear on YouTube as along with uh, all my little short daily reads. You can always message me if you would like a private read. And Earl, I want to tell you, thank you so much for being the podcast master today. You're welcome. And I am Loki Magical with a K. Have a magical rest of your day.